Hi, the advancement flap is a very commonly done flap in reconstructive surgery, whether on the face or on the limb. This video talks about the geometry of these flaps. The advancement can now be attempted again. In the apparatus mounted on the top of the electric train, the various modifications of these flaps and this flap has an advancement as shown by the pink colored arrow and the clinical application. We shall be discussing about the advancement flaps under the following headings of definition, biogeometry, classification, techniques to enhance advancement, clinical applications and modifications of the VY advancement flaps for the fingertip. The advancement flap is a flap which moves in a straight path without any lateral movement into the primary defect and this advancement is facilitated by the presence of excess skin so it is more comfortably done in the elderly people. This flap is usually re rectangular in shape but can also be triangular as we shall soon be seeing. The basic biogeometry of these advancement flaps has got certain salient features. The pedicle is at right angle to the base and is directed toward the defect. The second point is that the width of the base equals the width of the defect. The length of the flap must be a minimum of two to two and a half times the length of the defect. The flap must be advanced and not stretched. Stretching may cause compromise of the vascularity of the flap. And to help in this advancement, there are many techniques which we shall soon be seeing. And lastly, there will be a reclining cone formation which usually occurs when two different lengths are sutured. This is the classical diagram to show the geometry of the advancement flap. But to understand it better, we shall see a simulation of the flap being done. The commonest defect for which an advancement flap is done is a rectangular defect. So we have marked a rectangle which is going to represent the defect. The length of this defect that is the amount of movement of the flap should be around 1.5 centimeters and the width is around 2.5 centimeters. Now this is the rectangular defect A, B, C and D. So the flap has to move a length of about A, B and the width of the flap is B, D. So this is around 1.5 2 centimeters actually. So we need to have a, in a flap of length of about 2 to 2 and a half times which is around 2.5 centimeters. This flap is marked, the lines are parallel and the width of the flap is equal to the width of the defect which is around 2.5 centimeters. The defect A, B, C, D is now created and the incisions for the marked flap are made. The simulation flap is now raised. Now we will try to advance this flap. We must remember that this flap is an advancement flap and should not be stretched. If it is stretched too much and sutured, the compromise to the vascularity will occur. So the stretching should be avoided as far as possible. To allow the flap to advance more comfortably, there are different techniques which will be described soon. One of them is the excision of the Burroughs triangle which is done on both sides. The length of the side of the equilateral triangle which represents the Burroughs triangle which is going to be excised is about half the advancement that is required. Once this Burroughs triangle is excised, the advancement can now be attempted again. Now you will find that the flap is able to advance comfortably into the defect. Once it is confirmed that the flap has advanced well into the defect and there is no over stretching of the flap, the inset of the flap can be done as shown. And the final suture line that results is also shown. These advancement flaps sometimes may not move very comfortably. It is important that we do not pull the flaps and suture them, in which case they become stretched flaps and not advanced flaps. The problem with stretched flaps is that their vascularity is compromised to a great level 
and this may lead to embarrassment of blood supply to the flap. We shall now see different techniques of effectively advancing the flaps. The first technique that should be done is extensive undermining. This procedure must be done for all flaps and the undermining is done around the defect, around the area of the flap to make use of the laxity of the tissues around the flap. So the flap has a primary movement towards the edges of the defect and the edges have a secondary movement toward the flap. Now we already know that when there is a suturing of two sides of varying length we get what is known as a reclining cone deformity. This occurs even in an advancement flap. Here you can make out the reclining cone deformity that has formed. The use of a Burroughs triangle excision to correct this reclining cone deformity will help in the advancement of the flap. The Burroughs triangle must be marked as an equilateral triangle with a side equal to half the advancement needed that is half x. This will be the resulting suture line after advancement of the flap after excision of Burroughs triangle. Counter incision at the flap base can also help advance the flap but care must be taken that this back cut does not compromise the vascularity of the flap. The next technique of facilitating advancement of the advancement flap is the pantographic design. This is the pantographic design. When it is raised, it becomes lengthened. The meaning of the word pantograph is the principle used in the apparatus mounted on the top of the electric train which when extended can reach the overhead line to collect the power that is being transmitted there. A curvilinear design of the flap too can cause the same effect of lengthening the flap effectively. And lastly, a Z-plasty at the base of the flap in this fashion will help to lengthen the advancing flap and result in a suture line like this. We shall now see a broad classification of advancement flaps. This classification is based mainly on the alterations in design of the advancement flap. We have seen the classical unilateral advancement flap and also the design of this flap. This unilateral flap when done from two directions becomes the bilateral advancement flap. The design of the bilateral advancement flap can be for a square defect. Here. The defect is made square and is divided into two equal sized rectangles. Advancement flaps are planned for each of these two rectangular defects and advanced the final suture line is like this. Advancement flaps can also be planned for circular defects as represented here. Flaps from both sides in the form of V can be advanced and this will be the final suture line. Such bilateral advancement flaps can be typically be planned for defects on the forehead, especially central defects. Advancement flaps can also be designed in such a way that they are bipedicled. The defect is usually made elliptical. The bipedical advancement flap is planned on one side of this elliptical defect. The width of the flap is twice the width of the defect and the length of the flap is four times the length as shown in the diagram. After the bipedical flap is advanced, there may be a need for a skin grafting of the secondary defect. The bipedical advancement flap can typically be planned on the scalp or on defects on the shin of the tibia. The next modification is the A to T flap. The circular defect shown is converted into a triangular defect and flaps are raised from both sides to advance to cover the defect. Excision of Burroughs triangle on both sides may be done to enhance the advancement of the flaps. The final suture line usually settles in this pattern. This design of advancement flap is usually selected for areas where one side is an important landmark like the upper lip vermilion or the eyebrows. Next comes the important design of the VY advancement flaps. The basic principle of VY advancement flaps is that the flap is shaped like a V and the secondary defect caused by raising this flap is closed in the pattern of a Y. Since the V shape goes completely around the flap, the blood supply comes from what is known as the subcutaneous pedicle. So there is no actual pivot point for this flap 
but there is a pivot plane that is the subcutaneous pedicle of this V flap forms the plane which prevents the flap from advancing further. The VY advancement flap finds use in resurfacing defects on the face, cheeks and sacral pressure source. The flap is also used widely in resurfacing fingertip injuries. This is an example of a VY flap done for resurfacing an amputation of the tip of the middle finger of the hand. In a similar way, Y to V advancement flaps also can be done. Here, a Y-shaped incision is made, the flap is raised and it is closed in the form of a V. These flaps can be used specifically in two conditions in hand surgery. One is release of contractures and second is making incisions for Dupuytren's contracture release. After the contracture release is done, there is going to be excess skin needed for closure of the suture line. So if the incisions were marked as Y, they can be closed as a V. One of the applications for the VY advancement flaps is for fingertip injuries. There are many modifications of this VY flap for fingertip injuries which we shall see now. The Atasoy Volar VY advancement flap is ideally indicated for dorsal oblique amputations of the fingertip. It gives a very good contour of the fingertip and sensate skin on the tip. The Cutler lateral VY advancement flap is ideally indicated for transverse amputations of the fingertip and these two flaps are described in detail in the separate video on the Atasoy flap and the Cutler VY advancement flaps. The Moberg advancement flap is a type of advancement flap used for thumb tip defects. It gives a good sensate skin on the tip of the thumb but has a small disadvantage in that there will be a minimal flexion deformity at the interphalangeal joint of the thumb. The Venkataswami flap is also a type of VY advancement flap which is indicated for oblique defects on the fingertip. It is based on the neurovascular bundle on one side and is advanced to cover the defect. There is one disadvantage in this flap in that the distal portion of the flap may be insensate as it is supplied by the contralateral digital nerve which is not included in this flap. The segmolar advancement flap is also a modification of the VY flap where VY flaps are harvested based on both side neurovascular bundles so the entire flap is sensate. There is another modification in the volar VY advancement flap where the flap is taken wide and then the distal edges are brought towards each other and sutured to each other to provide a bulk and padding to the newly reconstructed fingertip or the pulp. The next modification of the VY advancement flap for the fingertip is the Jigan flap which is a French word which denotes one within the other like this set of tables. The first flap that is the blue colored flap is first raised and within this flap another VY advancement flap is raised and this flap has its own movement as shown by the blue colored arrow. Now another VY advancement flap is raised within this blue colored flap and this flap has an advancement as shown by the pink colored arrow. This is a clinical example of the Jigan flap. I hope you liked the video. Please click on the shown links to see more about the classification of flaps and the different types of local flaps that are available for reconstruction. And do not forget to subscribe to this channel to keep updated on the latest in learning hand surgery.